Assassin's Creed Mirage looks very promising and I really cannot wait to play it, but Ubisoft also announced what's beyond that smaller Assassin's Creed game and to be fair that got me even more interested and excited. It really seems that 2024 is the kickoff of a brand new era for the franchise, like we finally learned way more about Infinity after the brief mention during the showcase. Modern day is going to change forever, we got a code name for an upcoming multiplayer project. So if you like me are curious about the next 5 years for the Assassin's Creed franchise then leaving a like would really show your support. Subscribe to be up to date on everything Assassin's Creed and let's go. We are going into period 3 of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Period 1 was the old era ending with Syndicate with AC3 by the way being the most successful game in that first phase from a commercial standpoint. Then we went into period 2 with Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla. This is where Ubisoft started to focus on player engagement to keep players interested in the game with a ton of content at launch and of course their more extensive post-launch support with a ton of free content next to the more familiar season pass expansions. Now moving on to period 3, you will see more diversity in the types of gameplay we feature. Mark Alexi Cote, the executive producer on the franchise, notes in a Ubisoft blog post. So basically saying that they don't want one game to try and do everything again. For our games in period 3, we are prioritizing focus. So you can expect each one of these initiatives to know exactly what it wants to achieve and to be a top performer in the market it wants to attack. And that was really the problem with Valhalla. It was trying to be the game for every Assassin's Creed fan. We're bringing back social stealth, confession rooms that were missing in Odyssey Returns. Just like an easy way to one-hit assassinate every enemy, which was almost impossible in the recent games without tweaking and building your character. But yeah, even with these classic features, Valhalla in its core was still a big RPG, only then without deep customization options that made collecting items and putting together the best builds in Odyssey so much fun. I played most of the main story of Valhalla in the deluxe edition items you get at the start because there was no reason to change or experiment with other gear. I could kill everyone, even skull enemies, easily with the starting items. So even the Odyssey RPG fans were not really getting what they wanted out of Valhalla, so Ubisoft wants to change this in period 3. We're already seeing it with Mirage that is really made for everyone who liked the period 1 games, focusing on stealth, parkour, becoming a hidden one and of course performing assassinations of high value targets. While Red in Feudal Japan is especially made for everyone who loved the period 2 games, in particular Odyssey, as it's made by the same team. And with Codename Hexe, Ubisoft is taking a different approach to innovate in terms of gameplay so that we have different creative tracks within the franchise to keep surprising people. We know that this will not be an RPG, but still open world, and they also describe it as the start of a less formulaic release for the series. I can totally see a lot of inspiration from Elden Ring in this game, so that it will hold our hands way less and and way more focus on exploration and surprises. Darby, the narrative director on Valhalla and of course known for a lot of his work on the franchise is also developing Hexe and it seems to be set during the witch trials in Europe, Germany, probably during the 30 year war in the 16th 17th century. And this is pretty wild, Ubisoft said that both Red and Hexe are the biggest investments they've made on single player games in the company. And it's of course great that those teams can just focus on building a solo adventure while different teams inside Ubisoft can figure out what a multiplayer only experience will look like. There was a special media event in Paris where they were able to see a special slide for another new Assassin's Creed game with the codename Infinity which means unconquerable or undefeated in Latin. Yes, this was not discussed during the SS Creed showcase, but Steven Totillo, who was at the event, notes that he saw a conceptual image showing Cassandra, Evie, Ezio, Cesare, Borgia, maybe Hatem, and a Minotaur guy. I'm curious if it's like a Minotaur mythical creature or that Minotaur guy that we had in Odyssey during a side quest. I think it is the mythical creature, 
But uh, yeah, we might find out soon enough. So yeah, this multiplayer game seems to involve classic characters, but also villains, which is interesting. And it will not just have one setting, but might actually unite multiple time periods and different games that we've seen in the past. Development is being led by former senior members of For Honor and Rainbow Six Siege. So people with a lot of multiplayer experience and maybe earning characters will work the same as the heroes or operators in those games. No info if it will be co-op or pvp it could become a free-to-play game but that has not been decided yet and it should also just be the beginning of the return of assassin's creed multiplayer codenamed invictus the new take on multiplayer so doesn't seem to be like the pvp we had before or the co-op we saw in unity will be incorporated as a standalone experience within Infinity. And really, Infinity is at the core of the future of Assassin's Creed and will bring the biggest changes. In short, Infinity aims to bring the Animus experience to our real-world PCs and consoles. Ubisoft confirmed to Eurogamer that Infinity will be available at the same time as Red, so likely at the end of 2024. Now, worth noting is that you can still buy every big Assassin's Creed game live Red and Hexe in a box or through a digital storefront but then the moment you boot it up you will first launch into the Animus interface of Infinity and then see Red as one of the available DNA memories. So it's still the same games that we are building but bridged together in the Infinity Hub and obviously if you are in the Infinity Hub playing Red you will see Hexe come and be available as a memory that you can explore. Which would be like two years after Red as it seems that Hexe is planned for 2026. So in short Infinity Infinity will be the default boot up menu for every Assassin's Creed console and PC release at the launch of Red and beyond, which should make all the games more connected and accessible. And Ubisoft has actually been pushing for this already recently by putting a franchise menu in Origins and Odyssey where you can see and buy recent AC games and also when booting up Origins right now for example, you will see a banner saying that Mirage is launching in 2023. So Infinity will incorporate all this into an animus like interface but more importantly it will also be the only place where we can experience the present day storyline moving forward and i want to read this full quote because i think it's very interesting so for people who love the meta story we've never been able to give them enough they would love an entire game based on the meta story with gameplay and full immersion on the other side and i think this represents a sizable part of the audience a lot of people do not care about the meta story and would love to jump straight back in time. We're in a situation where no one is happy with it and I think that Mark Alexi Cote is hitting the nail on the head here and by making it separate it means that people who just want to play a ninja can immediately select the red memory bubble, jump in and not be interrupted by a modern day section. While people who are also curious about the present day story can choose to access that in Infinity instead. In period 3, we will be better caretakers of our meta story and this hub will help us accomplish that promise. With also Darby noting that the Kotaku headline saying that the AC games are ditching modern day stuff is 100% false. Like one of the problems from Origins to Odyssey for example was that suddenly a completely different narrative team was in charge of a character introduced by the developers in Origins. With Infinity it seems that one team can just focus on the modern day and because it's not linked directly to the new titles we probably get a more coherent story. And on the other hand this means that Quebec can just focus on making an epic feudal Japan tale as Codename Red just like Hexei won't have any modern day content on their own. With Infinity there will be an ongoing narrative happening that will update on a different schedule than the games and since we as the player are engaging with the animus directly through infinity we will be the modern day protagonist moving forward but also as infinity the platform grows there will be new opportunities for gameplay and features in modern day sections although we still don't know what this really entails, like if there will be playable modern day parts for example. Because as you maybe have guessed, the launch of the Infinity Hub will just be the start and it will continue to evolve not only with the release of Hexe, but this Infinity approach is allowing us to have different experiences of different sizes as well. Right now, studios like Sofia or Singapore that are not the lead teams on AC are working on the big mainline titles or leading development on big DLCs for Origins or Valhalla. 
while with Infinity they could more easily make a standalone project in a completely different time period that first did not really make sense because it had to be a really massive RPG. With the launch of Infinity they could just put it on this hub and a lot of people will still see it and it should also be priced accordingly like we're seeing now with Mirage which is shorter so they're asking 50 bucks. Sometimes you'll have free experiences as well and he's talking about Infinity here which I think is a great way to entice players to come back. So instead of having one big post-launch plan for the current game, so then everything they're making has to fit that time period and that mythology, it seems like going forward they're going to support Infinity, with many projects focused on different audiences. So yes, we could still see a mythical DLC for Codename Red, as we've also seen for Odyssey, but also smaller short stories in time periods that would first never fit the RPG approach, but can now be an experience like Mirage. I know right now it's still just a bunch of words, we really have to wait and see how it shakes out, but I do think that they took the right learnings from the past and are now going in a good direction that doesn't necessarily change a lot about the Assassin's Creed games we play right now, but mostly just massively expands upon it and gives more people what they want. Like worst case scenario, if Infinity doesn't work out, we still have a probably really solid open world Japanese game and also Hexay, which should have a completely different experience. But if Infinity works out, then the possibilities are endless because then we'll have a ton of also smaller cool SS Creed experiences next to the already exciting post-launch plan for Codename Red, where we will dive more into the RPG mechanics. Also, Infinity will allow developers to take more time on their flagship game because there is way more happening in the Assassin's Creed universe so they don't have to rush it out of the door. Like Clint Hawking, the creative director on Hexay, started working on the game more than a year ago so if it's really launching in 2026 and many signs point towards that then it probably means that the game will be in development for more than five years which is the longest time ever for an Assassin's Creed game. So I think the biggest takeaway is that the end of 2024 will really be the kickoff of maybe an endless amount of Assassin's Creed content. Not sure if it will burn out like what happened before, but on the other hand, if they really focus on different audiences with each game and if we get like one new RPG only every four years, then maybe it works out. We will have to wait and see. I'll of course keep you posted here, so subscribe for everything on the future of Assassin's Creed. A like on the video would of course really help me out. And check out my previous video on new Mirage details regarding Prince of Persia items and way more. I will speak to you soon. Goodbye.